In this video, we will review how to apply morphing in HyperMesh. HyperMesh has three unique morphing modules, free morphing, proximity morphing, and volume morphing. Morphing requires no special setup, and any mesh is ready to morph by just clicking and dragging. With free morphing, we can move nodes, faces, or edges. In our case, we want to see the effect of changing the thickness of our bike sprocket by changing the thickness 0.05 inches. With free morphing, I can click on the face and then type in the distance and generate the new thickness without having to adjust my CAD. Note, I can also morph through selecting the edges or nodes. In this case, I can click on the top nodes of the teeth and extend the depth of the teeth. In this case, I'll try distances of 0.07 and 0.125 inches. HyperMesh easily morphs the mesh without having to generate a new mesh. Proximity morphing is very similar to the free morphing tool, but it does not require you to define anchor nodes. This makes the approach a simpler process than free morphing, but should be limited to surfaces where only a few element layers need to be morphed. In our case, I'm going to morph one of the interior circles and adjust the one diameter to be slightly smaller. I can also adjust nodes or edges with proximity morphing. In my case, I can adjust the nodes normal to the face. I just drag upwards and release, and with that, I have a new mesh ready for simulation. Volume morphing is the other major morphing option we have available in HyperMesh. Volume morphing works by enclosing elements into six-sided prisms. Each side or node of the volume prism can be adjusted, which in effect morphs every element enclosed within the volume. Volume morphing works well as for, for assemblies or systems where you want to adjust multiple faces or elements at once. In my case, I'm going to create a volume cage around the center of my sprocket. I can then utilize the dimensional commands to adjust the volume. In my case, I'm going to extrude the center shape of the sprocket outwards by clicking on one of the faces of the prism and then extending normal to the face. I can also click on one of the nodes of the prism or split the prism to give me further control of my morphing. To learn more about morphing or other Altair products, go to www.trueinsight.io.